Hello everyone, welcome to episode number 26 of my horror game tutorial series. So, you may be shocked that we are not inside of the Unity editor, but instead we are inside of my web browser. And this is because I want to show you something. So, there was this guy, Risodo. He uh, was in my comment section and like wrote me a little comment saying Hey, check my uh, game out. I'm making a game and I want you to check it out. So what this uh, guy has done is basically he makes a game called Survive the Night. And he's uh, basing it upon my horror game tutorial series and this is just like so amazing like Seriously, there's I, I I can't even believe that. That's so great. I mean, oh my god. Um, <laughs> so let's actually have a look at what he has done. So as you can see, there's like the ghoul, and right here, for example, he added his own battery system, and so you, as you can see, you can actually use the things I teach you to um, put them into your own video game so you don't have to strictly follow my tutorials you can basically do whatever you want I only want to guide you right so there's also another thing I think it's very great so if I go a little bit forward in the video I think it's around yeah it's around here so what he did is he added this little um, panel right here and you have to put in a code, like it's basically working like the safe we made. But it's totally different, so you can also use the scripts I show you to make something entirely different and it's based upon the same system. So, I mean, like, this is so great what this guy has done. And because of that, I made, let me go to my channel, so my channel, and then playlist. So, I made a new playlist called Made with Unity, Unity f uh, 5 Beginner Tutorial Horror Game Series. And I'm going to put every video that you link to me, and it has to do with my horror game tutorial series. And I will uh, link to it in this playlist, so you guys can check out what other people have done with the same tutorials. So you can get your ideas and uh, exchange, like... I don't know, you can exchange thoughts and exchange ideas and you can have a look at what other people did with the things they taught you and I think this is just great. So now that we have that out of the way, I'm actually going to show you what we're going to do. So we have our enemy ghoul right here and we have an animator. I'm going to explain what an animator is after the intro. and there is this little animation tree and I'm going to show you how to set up all this uh, little dif uh, different animations you see here and yeah so I will see you after the intro okay so now we're inside of the unity editor and before we get to this guy we first have to fix something I missed in the last tutorial so let's go to our little safe right here and uh, click on it and as you can see the desk is marked as static and that means that also all, um, the door right here and the safe right here is marked as static and we don't want that because um, then we cannot actually open the door because when something is tagged as static right here it basically means this object doesn't move at all but because this object actually does move when we open it up, we have to untick the static mark for the safe and then click yes, change children. And now it should work. So if we go and test it out and ignore the ghoul for now, I just walk into the room right here and press E and increase the number. You can see it opens up. Okay, so now that we have done that, we can go to our little ghoul and start modifying it. Okay, so let's go to our prefabs folder 
and here you can see we have the enemy ghoul. Right click create new folder and call that enemy and then drag in the enemy ghoul. Okay and in here we create a new where is it? Animation controller. So right click create animation controller and we're going to call this ghoul underscore controller or actually I want to call it controller underscore ghoul. Okay so now go to your enemy ghoul and put it the controller ghoul into the controller right here and then click apply so all the changes we made are applied to the prefab we have here. Okay so now if I go back into play mode you can see the ghoul is kinda not behaving like it's supposed to so let's fix this. Go double click on your controller ghoul and there will be a new window called animator and we are going to work a little bit inside of here. So what does the animator do for us? In here we can set conditions for different animations to play. So let me explain it. So go to your imported folder and then inside of the ghoul folder objects uh, yeah objects um, you can see we have the ghoul right here if we scroll down we can see all the different animations the ghoul has so let's have a look at the idle animation so click on the idle right here and click on play and you can see the ghoul is idling okay so grab it and then drag it into the animator and now you can see a new box appeared and this little box right here is orange which shows us that this is the default state. The default state is basically the first animation that will be played whenever this object is instantiated. And you can see it right here so entry so basically when the game starts or when the object is created go this, fi uh, this uh, arrow go to idle okay so now if we go back to the scene and press play you can see the ghoul works as before okay so let's continue let's go back to the ghoul object with all the animations and have a look at all the animations we might could use so let's have a look at attack 1. I think this is a good animation so let's grab it and drag it into here. Then let's have a look at the run or the walk. So this is kind of slow and here we have the run animation. So you can choose either one of those it doesn't matter just grab one you like more and then drag it inside of there so I'm going to grab the walk animation and then go back and now we have an attack we have walk we have idle and let's think if we need anything more so we don't need to die because I am going to make. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a ragdoll, and if you want to have this die animation, you can just apply what I will show you in just a second, and then you are able to make your own die animation. And I think that's about it. Maybe I want to have a hit animation like this. So if we shoot at the ghoul it will give us a reaction so let's also grab the hit left okay so now let's start implementing those because right now they are grayed out so they don't do anything so the first thing I want to do is get this exit out of the way because I'm not going to use it and I've never actually used this node before so I don't even know what it does so just ignore it so 
first of all we want to transition from the idle into the walk animation. So right click, make transition and then drag the arrow to the walk. And then we also want to transition from the walk to the idle. So right click, make transition and go to idle. Then the next thing we need is we want to attack and it doesn't matter if in which state we are. So I don't care if we are idling or if we are walking. I want to be able to attack whenever I can. So right click, make transition and then click on the attack. So we can go from any animation into the attack animation and then right click. And once the attack animation is finished, I want to go back to idle. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with the hit left. So I want to go from any state into hit left. And then once I finished the hit left, I want to go back to idle. And if we would be walking or if we would be chasing the player, we just transition directly into the walk. Uh, animation and the player won't notice that we don't connect those two directly to the walk. Okay, so let's set up those transitions. Okay, so let's first go from idle to walk. So click on the arrow right here. And now we have a few options. So down here you have a preview window so you can see how the animation transitions. Okay, and you can also increase the speed or decrease it if you want to see it in slow motion, if you want to make very detailed work, but we're just going to get over it, so let's put it to one. And now right on the left of this window, on the animator, there is a tab called layers but we don't want to use any layers. You would use layers, for example, um, if you have a soldier guy and the soldier uh, does different animations with its feet and uh, can directly and can also shoot with his upper torso. So you would use layers to differentiate animations on one model, but because um, this Google doesn't do that, we don't need any layers. And so we can skip this tab and just go to parameters. And right here it says list is empty, so let's add a few parameters. Click on this little plus icon. And the first thing we need is a boolean. And we're going to call this boolean is chasing. So basically whenever we set this to uh, true inside of our enemy script, we want to start uh, we want to start playing the walking animation. So let's go to this little blue arrow and then in conditions click this little plus icon and it will automatically fill in your is chasing and if it isn't just click on this little down arrow and use the is chasing parameter. And we want to transition from idle to walk when we set this to true. So now if you would set this to true, we would start to walk. There's one more thing we have to adjust here. We don't want to have an exit time. So what this means is if we look at the settings and we have this idled, this means before we can transition into the walk animation, we first have to play 91% of the idle animation and this is kind of stupid in this case so we don't want any exit time so click on this has exit time button right here to untick the box okay so now whenever we set the is chasing to true it will it imme immediately start to transition into the walking animation so let's basically do the same for going backwards so to transition from walk to idle. We click on this little plus icon, it fills in is chasing for me and then put this to false. And again, unta uh, untick 
the has exit time. Okay, so now this is working, and let's go uh, to uh, the attack. So let's have the any state above there so that we can see the arrows. So to do things like attacks and something that has to happen immediately, like an attack or when the enemy gets hit or whatever, you want to have something called a trigger. So let's click on this little plus icon and add a trigger and call this trigger um, attack. So what a trigger is, it's basically a boolean that turns itself on and off in a split second. It's very fast. It just, um, yeah, you, the benefit of using a trigger is you don't have to write as much code, basically. And they're working more reliably than uh, actually turning off and on a boolean to do basically the same thing. So use a trigger for something like this. So let's go to the transition from any state into attack. We want to add a new condition and this time I'm not going to use this chasing, instead I'm going to use attack. So now if I play this, you can see the guy's idling and now he's attacking. And has exit time is unticked. And yeah. And if we want to transition from the attack to the idle, we click on this little arrow right here. And in this case, I want to just leave it on has exit time. So basically, when this animation has played, just transition into idle. And that's good enough. So let's click on the little plus icon, add another trigger, and call it uh, is hit. Um, and then click on this little arrow. Click plus. I uh, click the plus icon. Is chasing and change it to is it. And right here has exit time is also good enough for me. So now if we go back to the scene view and actually go to the game view, make sure maximize on play is unchecked. And now I'm going to show you what we've actually done. So let's go into the play mode. So the enemy is idling right now. And if we press escape and pause the game. And now if I go to the animator. And tick is chasing. And go back here. You can see the ghoul starts walking. Right? But he continues to walk even though he is at our position. And we're going to change this in code. And now let's have a look at the other two animations. So untick this. Tick attack, go back to game view and click on the unpause button. And you could see he attacked us. And now the last animation. Pause the game, go back to animator. And tick is hit. And now back to game view and click here and you can see or may could have not um, the enemy was playing his struck animation so that's about it i hope you enjoyed this episode if you have any further questions leave them in the comment section below and i will answer them as soon as i can also please leave a like and also consider subscribing to stay up to date and yeah, so until next time, don't forget to smile and bye guys.